demarcated these uh, technology readiness levels, one through nine, of from something that only works under extreme conditions with a PhD over, you know, engineer overseeing it in a lab uh, being one, like the first proof of concept to nine being, you know, your smartphone that you buy off the shelf and it works super easy. Um, and so kind of think about one readiness levels, one, one through three being kind of basic science and then four through seven kind of being field testing and integration and then seven through nine being production use. And so it's an interesting back and forth with industry and science where scientists do the one through three um, and research engineers. And then it really takes a lot of times an industry partner to get it through four through seven with hopes of commercializing and then widespread adoption as a tool in the seven through nine range. Um, we, a lot of people refer to that four through seven range as like the valley of death for new technologies. It can be demonstrated as a viable idea, but then once the basic science is done, it can be really hard to Push get it through there. that. Here's how do we actually use it in the real world gotcha. um, implementation. Awesome, thank you. A very interesting rock wall. Little cup mm -hmm. coral here. So okay, here we go away. That's the first cup coral I've noted on this this dive. Or second. They're all running together. Every day is a Tuesday and we're two and a half weeks into the expedition. This is always <laughs> the point at which I start getting fuzzy and sometimes cranky. Yeah, I get grumpy. <laughs> Good for you, newbie. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I need a nap. Hey, for the nap. I was texting with my PhD advisor, who I've sailed with a couple times and yesterday, and I told her it was day 18, and she told me I needed to hide in my stateroom, lock the door, and talk to no one <laughs> until I got over it. <laughs> All right, let's get the ship moving, if you don't mind. Make Roger. some tracks. Roger. You want to get out front first, Dan? Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. I want to see what's out here. I can turn and burn across the sand here. Uh, I need to go clockwise, right? Well, speaking of exploration stuff, yesterday in 1966, the surveyor was the first soft landing on the moon. Oh, wow, cool. Good fun fact. My space trivia fact that that irks me, I guess, is that it has now been longer between current day and the moon landing than it was between the Wright brothers and the moon landing. Yeah. Oh, wow. Between what? It's been it's been more years between now and the moon landing than it was between the Wright brothers' first flight and the moon landing. Oh. It means we're overdue. Aren't they trying to put a new? Nope, never mind. Quick send there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Artemis program is trying to go back to the moon. I've heard different. I think at one point they were even trying to say launch in 2025, but I'm not sure where, where that stands most recently. Little baby Anthemastus. Mushroom coral. Okay, go ahead, Tix. up the bed forms again, indicating a little more current. So might be optimistic here. We're going to get back into uh, a zone of denser corals, potentially. No idea. I think that. Oh, it's retracted. Probably pseudoanthomastus, which is Looks very similar, just has a longer stalk. Holy cow, is that a waypoint approaching on an M screen? Yup. Wow. Got a whole one waypoint, this watch. It's <laughs> a good watch. Oh, 
Oh, another one of those little radiolarians up in Atalanta. It's amazing once you get that search image for something, how often it will pop, pop up. up. For those listening online, if you go to NopolisLive.org, scroll to the bottom, you'll see recent highlights. One of the interesting creatures that we found early on was a radiolarian type of protus that was extremely large for what it was. You want to zoom? Yeah, let's take a quick zoom. There you go this ahead is that, I'm pretty sure it's, this is that fine, super fine branched Chrysogorgia we've been seeing this dive. I think it's mainly dead. Is there an anemone yeah, on it? That's the, an anemone sitting on a dead Chrysogorgia stock. All right, thanks. Okay, going. I know this is going to be a hard question to answer, but how long does it take for a coral skeleton to decompose? It depends um, seriously on the type of coral. Um, and some of them can fossilize and, and basically never decompose. Um, so the corals with proteinaceous skeletons um, are going to de decompose faster than the ones with more mineral skeletons. Um, but I don't know. I mean, like we see Madripora and Enopsamia um, skeletons that we assume are, you know, approaching the fossil record in the order of millions of years. Madripoor is a type of coral, yep. not just like a madripoor uh, from a starfish? Correct. Madripoor is uh, a type of colonial sclerotinian. Um, one we really haven't, it's, it's one of the few one, one of the few kind of common-ish taxa we haven't seen here on this expedition yet. We've been kind of deep for it, um, so I'm not terribly surprised we haven't seen it. They're generally in the hundreds of meters, not the thousands of meters. We may have seen one or two on that really epic coral dive we had a few days ago. Um, I sometimes struggle telling them apart from some of the Enolapsamias. Um, so there may have been a Madripora or two hiding in the Enolapsamia gardens we saw. Um, but I couldn't be sure. Awesome, thank you. All right, you ready to get moving? Sure. Bridge nav. Can we move three zero meters, zero seven five, please? Thank you. As we approach the last hour of our watch, this is the, about the time I'm really appreciative of the people who designed this control van that they don't let the breakfast smells in. Very true point. That was a definitely a drawback of Okeanos Explorer's control room, as it was right next to the galley van outside. And that last hour could be really painful once the bacon started getting cooked. Means we got good filters. Yep. We got no filters. Self-contained. We've been seeing some really interesting and diverse geology on this dive. Yeah, we really have. Yeah, we're starting to pick up a few corals again here as we get closer to the headwall scarp. And you'll hear me say headwall scarp. That generally just means the, the normally vertical or near vertical um, wall that is uh, exposed when uh, a mass wasting event or a large kind of slump falls off. Um, and so that's what we're, we think we're going over now is the area that's slumping down is what we're on now and we should be approaching um, some type of vertical, steep or near vertical feature here 
that is the um, interior of the geo that's being exposed as this falls away. That's all right. That's just the way the current is. Corley, do you have a sense of how long these kind of mass wasting events take? Are they, are they quick? Are they slow? Are they both? I don't actually know what the timelines are associated with like a, a slope failure like the one we think we're looking at today. It's kind of hard to tell because on land they're generally pretty quick, <laughs> but we can see them on land. We generally don't see mass wasting events under the sea because we're never here. Um, like some typical reasons a mass wasting event would happen would be something very instantaneous like an earthquake. Um, in that case, it might be kind of quick, but I don't know how quick it is in relation to like something like a mudslide on land. Mm -hmm. Another one is pretty kind of fat polyp sparse branching uh, chrysogorgias like the one we just sampled. Thank you. I know, I'm impressed with this one. <laughs> <laughs> Print that one off and put it in your room. Yeah, I'm writing down all of the numbers of the still cam shots I take that I like. There will be a, um, usually a still cam highlight uh, folder. I have no idea. I've been meaning to talk to Leela and... Um, there is one on the... Um, Server the Nautilus FS. Is it all of them or just the highlights? Is no. There's just yeah. the highlights. Oh, okay. Yeah, there should be highlights. Someone's going through all of those pictures and picking up. Okay. Okay. Who is sorting that? Uh, Megan or Leela. Megan's looking for um, outreach photos and Leela's looking for science photos, but they're, yeah, they're both meant to. Go through and pull them out. It's a lot of work. I was looking through the results that they pulled out yesterday, and there's some really nice shots in there. Oh, yeah. I haven't looked at any of them yet. I see purple. Got an old bamboo stalk, a little Victorgia hiding in the cracks, and a big Aritagorgia up here on the right. What is that living on the Aritagorgia? Looks like. Oh, brittle star. Um, yeah. It's moving around quite a bit, though. For a brittle star, I'm not used to seeing them that stretched out. Like it almost looks like it's dead and just flying around. Yep, quick zoom there on the. Just got a bunch of stuff on him. Looks like it's got a couple of the coral livers, jellyfish. Jellyfishes as well. <laughs> Brittle stars hanging on with one arm. Okay. Up, oh, and we're back in the hammock rallies again. Both look like they have <laughs> zoanthidin um, infestations. Both of the big ones do. 
The little one in the foreground appears to not. Not seeing much in the way of associates. Looks like two or three brittle stars and maybe one an enemy, but pretty unoccupied. like an anthemastis of some type hiding down under the overhang as well. Looks like it's pink instead of its normal kind of red burgundy color. Right, cannot, can't quite hold it still there. Maybe if I let go of the control. What is that? I don't know what has been showing up in the Atlantic camp for a while. I think this is likely man-made. Oh, is this our first trash? This is our first marine debris, yeah. I suspect. Like yeah, I think it is a segment of a tarp hooked on a coral. That brings up a Negative. good question what do we do with marine debris do we collect it and take it back do we no leave it? generally we leave it leave it be actually be surprised how many organisms do um, make it their home so while this very likely could have killed this coral I'm sure other smaller things are making it home as well and there's a certain danger to the vehicle um, with messing with this type of thing so as a general rule we leave it in place Bring it home in the thruster if you want. I'll pass. <laughs> right. Good demonstration of the current here, though. Yeah. yeah. So, Herc's heading due north, so that current is a strong west to east right here. Telltale. So uh, for a couple of years now, there's been a lot of talk about marine debris, especially with the four oceans bracelets. Have you all heard about any major strides or headway being done for the large garbage patches or even just marine debris as a whole? So there's a lot of, I mean, I'm of the belief that there's no way to clean them up effectively or any kind of achievable goal. We really have to stop it at its source. And, what, and that can be in two, you know, three ways, using less plastics, um, making sure plastics are properly disposed of, and potentially capturing them in rivers and or harbors before it gets into the ocean. Once they're on the open ocean, I just can't add them away to efficiently clean them up without uh, removing and killing a massive amount of plankton and pelagic organisms that live in and around the plastic. 
Um, so I think really the best way to control these things is, is making sure they are properly disposed of, reducing the use of them, and then as a, you know, a secondary pass, doing some of the uh, filtering of rivers and cleanup type things in harbors. Um, but I really can't fathom a way to functionally clean up the ocean with modern, with current technology. Samoa, the plastic was completely banned. Yep. Um, but as we were talking about, um, and, and some places have done that, but as we were talking about a little bit last night, um, that has some really nasty trade-offs um, in yeah. terms of um, carbon pollution, actually, because some of the alternatives to plastic are far more energetically expensive to produce and maintain. Um, so the, the nuance and of conservation really matters. There are no easy, simple answers for the most part. You okay to keep moving, Dan? Yes, please. Bridge now. Can we have another three zero meters, zero six zero, please? Thank you. Lots of these um, sponges that we've been seeing, which is really interesting because they're not a sponge I remember seeing a lot of, frankly, um, elsewhere. Why is it that they pile up all that sand? I don't know why they do it. Um, it might be a byproduct of just the hydrodynamics of those um, attachment points. So they're going to cause, you know, block the current, um, basically, and create a little eddy or a lee behind them. And so the sediment, uh, the sediment particles will fall out in stiller water. Um, and so it might be um, collecting those as a byproduct of just the way it's structured, or it may be have evolved to be structured in order to do that. And I don't have an answer for that. Awesome, thank you. It's funny, in one of the weird places you don't necessarily think about experience coming into play, but I feel like I'm, I, I'm a whitewater kayaker and rafter and, and do a lot of flatwater kayaking too, and I feel like my experience thinking about the movement of water around rocks in my hobbies helps me a lot in thinking about current flow down here on where there would be eddies, where the chan where the um, water would be channelized in between rocks, um, and I think about it, I feel like I'm thinking about it a lot of, as a whitewater paddler when I'm thinking about where these corals are growing and how the f current flow may be moving around these rocks. And I just see, every time I see um, those sponges with their little accretions of thing, it looks like I can see the eddy lines of what it would look like um, if you were trying to catch the eddy um, coming downriver. This is a big one. Yeah. 
this growth form is a little bit different than we're seeing on this dive. They've all kind of got, recently on this dive, they've got this hollow section in the center. Um, what are you, what's your heading? You're headed to the north. Bridge east. nav. This one doesn't have as much sand as those other ones. Though. Yeah, it does not. You're right. Same step, please. Three zero zero six zero. It's not exactly in line with the, what we you. thought the current was a minute ago to tell which way it was trying to capture. If that was, we were looking up current or down current. It looks like we are looking more or less up current. Would you agree, Dan? I think so. I okay. got kind of turned around. Just so now. that's interesting. So it's it's got the, w the wider opening is down down current, which is not necessarily what I would have assumed in the first. Can we look at what's probably bushy hydroid there? Right. Our hydrozoan. No, he's got his, uh, That's really good his opening is into the current. Yeah. The opening is into the current? Okay. Yeah, it's the, this is the current pushing the ROV now. Okay. That makes a little more sense to me. It does. Oh, look, it's a hydroid with an egg. So here's the here's the great question: Is why do assuming these are cephalopods? Why do the cephalopods preferentially lay their eggs in hydrozoans? Because the hydrozoans are, are often overlooked um, and not given as much interest as the um, the hard corals or the um, the more traditional corals. But yet it looks like they're probably super ecologically important when it comes to the reproduction of pushing there do what we've been assuming are Dumbo octopi eggs, but may or may not. But I think every one of we every one of these we've seen has had some form of egg uh, attachment point in it, just like this one we're seeing here. All right, science is happy. Thanks. Okay, go ahead. Thanks. Another good size primnoid here with a whole bunch of opiocantha opioroids. No, it's all lining up here, right in the, the kind of this local channel low, along with a couple of these, for lack of a better word, scoop sponges. Mm. Can we look at this, please? Sure. This might be our first Swiftia. Push in there for us. Yep, this is the first Swiftia I've seen uh, on this expedition. So this is still a Plexorid. Um, and it's one of the few Plexorids you can readily tell the genus level. And the, way I tell these apart is see that the polyps are a different color from the skeleton. So it's got a very, per very Paragorgia look to it um, in terms of its skeleton and overall shape. But those polyps are kind of a yellow twinge, um, a, bit a different there. color than you would on a, see on a Paragorgia. So when their polyps are retracted, they're extremely hard as hell apart from the Paragorgias. But when they're out like this, it's pretty easy to see that it's um, actually a Swiftia. 
And we're good on the Swifty, if that's all I need there. Trying to get a tight zoom on the pull-ups. That's okay, if you're getting bounced around. Uh, I was shaking, so I let go of it. I'm glad we finally saw a Swiftia. You've been uh, mentioning them for several dives now, so I was hoping to see one. Yeah, because I keep, keep, I always feel like I get tricked by them. I'm like, oh, it's a Paragorgia, and then we look closer, I'm like, oh, I'm wrong. Okay, you can go wide, thanks. What's the scientific name for a snake star again? Uh, Astroschema. Astroschema, thank you. Playing home for a whole bunch of other critters, it looks like. Oh, it looks like... Hmm. Can we get a tight look at one of these? Sure. Yeah. Set it down here on the rock. Oh, and it's got a little coralivorous jelly, too. That little purple thing? Yep. Two of them. It could be any of these little tight nodes. It doesn't have to be the ones at the top, whatever is easiest for you. But I don't know what I'm... It, it, it's a really strange branching pattern. I'm assuming there's probably some kind of injury or associate in there that's been there a long time and the bamboo is growing weirdly around it. And I want to see if we can see what's in the center of it. Sorry, where do you want to look? Um, any of these kind of tight, whirly things. Okay, there, zoom in there. That Paul Zoom, is it? Here, Max. Oh, I slid away. I get a little closer if you want. A tighter zoom. Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah. So these are just really like little sections of really tight Come down a few branching. Minutes. Gotta assume that something happened to the coral in those spots that has caused that, but I'm not seeing anything obvious. I mean, there's a little, I, there's a little polychaete in there, but that's not what's causing it. That's super strange. I don't know what's going on here. That's good. I just we're getting the bounce from the ship there. Yep. All right. I'm not gonna be able to solve this problem with this so we can move so on a little barnacle is this like a is this something taking over the coral on that this? yeah those are hydroids growing over dead stock um, but these really tight strange branching patterns is what I'm yeah um, has caught my attention it looks like a star from a, a is that the jellyfish as well yep mm -hmm. You want to move on? I could pan yep, around no, here for days. On. <laughs> okay, no, let's go, move on. Go ahead. Thank you. Oh, send a, send a screenshot to Scott France or Les Watling, who are bamboo coral experts.
Much more hemicorallium here. A couple more primnoids. One Eritogorgia. surprised that we're not seeing any more relief in Atalanta sonar coming up. Are you expecting a steeper? Yeah. Lynette, can we maybe cheat a little bit further north on the next move? See sure if we can. can. Contact, make contact with the steeper wall sooner. Big cusky eel swimming, swimming by. You ready for that move, Dan? Yes, ma'am. Bridge nav. Can we try three zero meters, zero four zero, please? Thank you. Water really isn't murky, isn't it, on Atlanta's camera? It's a uh, very stiff breeze, too. This is Herc in the ocean. Current looks like it's predominantly out of the east now, or still. Uh, hard to and tell. It's still going north. Oh, right. I had that. Sorry. I misread Herc's heading. Yeah.
was optimistic when we hit that little bunch of Hemic Rally a minute ago that we were getting into another big coral band, but now I'm uh, second-guessing that. Ran out of rocks. Uh, I don't think we ran out of rocks. <laughs> That's off to the south here is a little. Seeing plenty of rocks with not a lot of coral. You want to continue, Dan? I'm, uh, I'm totally turned around here. Let's hold it for a shift change. Robert should be here. Okay. Seconds. Well, while well, we're hanging out, let's go check out a couple of these promotes, if you would. Yeah, right. Kevin Conrad, uh, one of our geologists ashore, is commenting that, we're, that he thinks this looks like classic drowned reef structure as we're moving over here, which I would agree with. Which, um, <coughs> any particular? Um, either of these two is fine. Right. Can you explain what a drowned reef structure is, please? So just basically what you would expect to see um, if you were looking at a, a fringing or a reef structure on an atoll would... Uh, what you would see actually on the north shore of Oahu. Um, this looks very similar to that, just submerged. Um, so they're kind of the same shape of the rocks and types of rocks you would see um, at the surface uh, on a tropical reef. These look very similar. Um, these cracked pavements with um, some carbonate mixed in. So it looks like the... Uh, awesome. Thank you. From Noah in front of us has, um, I don't see any associates on it. It might be something little. And then the one in the back, um, it's got a little sidekick hemichorallium with it and a couple, hey, couple um, brittle stars. And it looks like one little branch of zoanthid infection. You can uh, push in there, Daryl. Yep, got a couple couple zoanthids uh, that have co secondary colonized the schedule. So I think we'll say yeah. goodbye here. It I looks like the 8 to 12 is coming in. So we're going to go off comms and head catch some breakfast yep. and enjoy your next watch. Have a great one, everyone. Uh, front rows off comms. Thanks, everyone.
Molnar. Molnar. Good morning, Ace 12. Good morning, thumbs up. <laughs> Hi, remaining four to eight. <laughs> uh, Adam, are you there? there You're not there yet, Roger. Okay, we'll make our own decisions. Chris, where are we going? <laughs> I'm just hanging out. Let's see, I think we should go south. Great. <laughs> Palmyra is not too far away, right? Wait a second. <laughs> it's a trap. Okay, well, I think we're going to continue the direction that the last watch was going, and then when Adam arrives, he can... Uh, I'm here. <laughs> now you're here. No, I'm here. <laughs> uh, so we had been talking, uh, I guess the last watch had been had decided that the waypoint, the track that we had laid, um, wasn't very interesting, and so they were heading kind of zero four zero up. Yeah, trying to get closer to that wall. To that wall, yeah. So if that sounds good, we'll continue on that way. Yep. You can even juice up the the bearing a little bit more if you want. Uh, negative. Okay. With our current heading, we're going to... 40 is actually a little outside of our happy range. Okay. Actually, I think we're going to do 050. Zero zero. <coughs> Bridge now. Good morning. Uh, three zero meters, zero five zero. Okay, then we'll do it in a bit, yeah. When's the poster due? Okay. Polyopagon sponges. Chris Gorgia. Nicolata. What's this one? Primnoid. Hello.
there's a bamboo sparsely branching. Rita Gorgeous. Deck Frog is back. jelly stuck to it. Oh, really? Can we you zoom? Know, a little higher up. Any more? Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh. Hydrozoan. like some other stuff in there too. More of the same. Cool, thank you. Bridge now. Action shot. Uh, let's add three zero meters to the zero five zero. All right. Good morning, eight to twelve. How's everybody feeling this morning? Hmm. We're mm -hmm. a little tired. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. yet. Not yet fully hang caffeinated. In. Yeah. Waking hang up. in there. Hang in, in the there. process. We got Paula had to knock on my door to make sure Ooh, I was fine. Look at <laughs> that. you wear? <laughs> over the edge. I was. So. Sorry about Just that, slow. Jules. No, that's okay. Can we zoom over here? I think that's, oh, that's heavy Coralia. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Um. Hey, zoom in, Dave. Er. Beautiful color. Cool. How do you uh, discriminate between hemichorellium and paragorgia? Is it knobbliness? Um, hemichorellium looks like it has a, a thicker skeleton. It looks more rigid. Mm. Um, the polyps are slightly different. The pattern's a little bit different, but it can be really hard to tell, especially from a distance. Um, and then there's something yellow just above it. Can you zoom on that, please? Above? Above the hemichorellium. Like, like in the background? The left? To the left. On the oh. ledge. Up, right up you're there. seeing it in the <laughs> still cam, so it's on the top of the ledge. Sorry. What are we looking at? Right there. Oh, zoanthid covered something or other. I think it's a plexorid. Zoom in on that, Dave. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow.
Plexora, did you say? I think so. Um. Yeah. <coughs> Good? Yep, thank you. More primnoids. Really large hemichorellium. That's so cool. All the way down. <laughs> <laughs> Did we laugh too much yesterday? Have we? Oh, <laughs> I know. <yeah>. Right. <laughs> <ourselves. laughs> I'm physically present, <laughs> but that's all. To Chrysogorgia. Looks like maybe a squat lobster inside. We're good, thank you. So these guys don't get any sunlight. They How would not. they react if they were in in shallower water that was like cold enough? Well, they are, I don't know if you could say designed, but <laughs> they are adapted to Higher pressures, um, cold water, Zoom in. zero sunlight, um, and they also have certain bacteria associated with them Ooh. that's found in the deep sea. You wouldn't have that in shallower waters, and it's thought that that may um, play a role in the health of the coral. So for a lot of reasons, these corals wouldn't survive in shallower waters, um, but they also don't have um, the algae symbiont that shallow corals do, the zooxanthellae, um, because they, they just don't need it. Mm -hmm. That is a thick sea star. Yeah, it looks like you You're had right. the same amount of breakfast that I did. <laughs> 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 what did you have for breakfast? Everything. Everything. Looks like Hyalanema over there. These ones are so cool. You zoom in, Dave.
That's cool. Yeah, all right. Bowling ball sponge. That's like what I was dumpling. totally thinking. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. It looks like a soup dumpling. Or polyopagon remnants. And Geoplectella. And a little bit of foreshadowing in the still cam. <laughs> oh, a C pen. Can we zoom on this, please? Zoom in there. Can that be Halop Terrace? Oh, it's got a little part that was eaten away. Hmm. Looks like it's barely hanging on in the middle there. Yeah. yeah. It's not doing so hard. That doesn't matter, right? That the colony doesn't need to be like fully connected like tree bark. No. Um Look at that thing. And What's coral that? Oh. Yeah, that was Haloptaris. Oh. But coral can recover. You look at that? Uh, um, yeah. Okay, so we have a Metallogorgia and an Aridogorgia Magnus Brallis. Um, you see yeah. it? Whatever that is. He's oh, that thing you wanted to zoom, zoom on. Zoom in there. Um, but corals can recover, they can regrow. That is really interesting. Is that Wait. a polychaete? Oh, what is that? That's a... A big oh. polychaete. Yeah. Oh, wow. Or a worm? Wow. Or an urchin? No. That's not an urchin. That's wormy. Wormy. That's weird. Do we want it? Um... <laughs> Please say know. yes. Please say yes. <laughs> I think this is. I think that's a polychaete. Yeah. Is right? it on the list? I don't think so. I don't think it's on the list. But Burn. if you if you want it, no, I don't want it. If you think so, I don't want it. Okay. I don't. I can't identify it past polychaete. <laughs> carry on. Carry yeah, on. can carry on. Um. Coral, right. So since coral corals are colonial, um, they can recover by um, just replicating. Um, and that's how, like, after bleaching events, if there's any remaining tissue, they can, um, they can come back. And then question from chat, um, based on the previous uh, conversation about corals, uh, wouldn't they also get out competed by organisms who are adapted to light and find it harder to find a surface to cling to? Yeah, that's a great point. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Bridge now. Sponge. Yeah, dead ferrea. Dead ferrea. Three zero meters, zero five zero. This 
Zoom in, Dave. We can move on. <laughs> no zoom. Yeah, we can keep going. Thank you. Oh, oh, so chat says the polychaete that we were looking for is a sea mouse. Sea mouse. That's cool. cool. Yeah, I'm looking it up. Right. Oh, yeah. Right, Jules? We zoom in, Dave. Yeah, that looks right. Oh, it's so cool. This is a protoptilum. Thanks, chat. Awesome, we can keep going, I have an ID. Can you elaborate, um, like, what is a bleaching event for our yeah. viewers, please? Um, bleaching events occur when corals expel the, their um, photosynthetic symbiont, the zooxanthellae. Um, yeah, and this happens when environmental conditions are unfavorable. So when the temperature increases, when um, the water is too ac uh, acidic, um, they will dissociate from the coral. Um, and this is not good for the coral. The coral needs the symbiont to survive. Um, corals are heterotrophic, so they are filter feeders, but shallow corals also rely heavily on the products of photosynthesis from these symbionts. So, so do the corals expel the, the symbiont or does the symbiont decide to leave? Um, who, who's, the, who's breaking up with who? It's the coral. The coral? Yeah. The coral's like, ah, uh, um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I didn't have an end to that. <laughs> yeah, the coral's like, ah. And then maybe that it's all there is a, a cost good. to maintaining the symbiont relationship, and so they like I'm, I'm going to go on my own because I have a better chance of survival. Um, mm, yeah, Otherwise, I, it seems like a silly thing to do. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense. Slippers. I guess there is an answer that I um, will have to look further into. <laughs> I like vaguely remember someone telling me about this, but I don't remember enough to, to tell y'all about it right now. So stay tuned. Is that primnoid? Yeah, can we zoom? I just want to make sure it's not a bamboo. Looks like another. Zoom? Yes, please. Zoom in, Dave. Looks like another hemichorallium under there and hyalinema in the background. Yeah, that's looking primnoid e to me. That's good, thank you. Since coral bleaching only happens when the coral kicks out the Susan tail, the algae that lives inside it, deep sea mm. corals don't have coral bleaching. Mm -mm. Bridge now. <laughs> like we can add another three thing? zero meters to zero five <laughs> zero. It's a bamboo whip. Zoom in, Dave. Lepidisis. Little squatty up there. Oh, hey. Yeah, Lepidisis. Thank you. 
I know I've asked this before, but on the two sonar views, which one's which? Argus, or Atalanta's on the left, Herc on the right. Okay. And Herc is at uh, 10 meters scale, and Atalanta's at 20 meters. Okay. Wow, we got a lot of coral diversity in here. Zoom in, Dave. What's the red one again? I just keep calling it mushroom <laughs> coral because I forget. <laughs> I want to call oh, it the AstraZeneca. Right. Um, it's <laughs> Anthemastus. Anthemastus. <laughs> I don't know where you got that. But well, I have some words with A in s stored in one part of my brain. <laughs> Points for creativity. Uh, didn't Anthemastus get renamed? To Did AstraZeneca? It? That would be handy for no, me. No. No. Adam. <laughs> no. Uh, it's Not still Anthemastus that I know. Okay. Maybe it got renamed to Anthemastus. Worms says that's it's still Anthemastus. Okay. Who says that? The <laughs> World <laughs> Register for Marine Spe of Marine Spe oh, A worm. I just just the one I keep <laughs> in my pocket <laughs> that I ask all my questions to. My worm says it's still Anthemastus. Worm says. Wormy, why are we here? <laughs> Although worm is probably the easiest puppet to make, I think it's just like a sock, right? <laughs> in the in terms I mean, of how I challenging of a puppet, different things are to make. You guys don't have that what scale if it's in your head. a segmented worm. Well, we got to 23 minutes. minutes before we went off the rails this time. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Polyopagon is also not a real tough puppet. So where do you put the mouth? That is the question. Hmm. I'm interested in the growth habit. Like I'm looking at that primnoa that started growing down mm -hmm. and then kind of turned the corner. I'm oh, interested in how they know which way to grow. Yeah, that is a good question. Like how much of it is just morphology? Like how it... Yeah, if they're on top, they make a fan. Grow according to the genus or like yeah. does it have to do with flow at all? Because it looks like it was like under the rock and then it sort of like grew to be up there. Yeah, like it's growing towards the light, but the light is yeah, the flow. Yeah, like sunflowers. Yeah. And just like a lot of other plants. <laughs> um, another note about coral bleaching. Um, not only can corals recover from mortality, so like if polyps die, they can uh, regrow. If corals are bleached, so if the symbiont leaves the coral, um, they like they can still recover. Like they can obtain a symbiont again. So. Now that's interesting because they are actively expelling the symbiont. But right. how does the symbiont get back in? Do they actively let in the correct symbiont? Yeah, there's some selectivity hmm. um well the algae this algae and the coral they like each other and they want to be together <laughs> bridge does, does the so they algae find a way. does the algae exist does is uh, the algae happy zero outside zero the coral yeah i think it's fine outside the coral but it's like better for the algae the coral provides it with this like nice habitat yeah. treats the sun and you know some other some other things maybe some nutrients 
I think that's one of the things that if uh, if the temperature rises for a pretty long time, then the algae is just gonna go with the Move current and it's not current. going to be there anymore oh, really? for the core to so accept it. So if it, it stays hot, the mains are on. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, corals are pretty good at surviving short-term stressors. So like if there's a sudden spike in temperature and there's some polyp death or you know they bleach they can still recover but under like prolonged heating events the likelihood that they'll be able to fully recover goes down um, and they can still survive for a while without the algae symbiont they can switch to um, filter feeding but Eventually, they will start. But they have some ways of making it work. But just to remind people, we're talking about shallow corals, not yes. these. Yeah, deep we're ones. still talking about shallow, shallow corals. Yeah, that's, that's a, a point. that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot less research on um, deep water corals and. Um, bacterial symbionts because they don't have algae but some research suggests that they that specific corals have specific um, microbiomes yes holobiome I think that coral we passed a second ago might have been um, Paracorgia, not Hemicorallium. You want to look at it? Yeah. If it's not too hard. Lots of polyopagon around here. I can't believe we saw a sea mouse. That's cool. <laughs> Apparently they come in. Well. Different, not different colors, but. Wasn't that one in front of us? Yeah, it was this one there. I love how so many things are named after terrestrial animals. Right. In the deep sea. It's like, oh, you know what that worm reminds me <laughs> of? A mouse. Let's see, this one looks. um. Iridescent, yeah, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, this one, you have this one, and then Ooh, you have the green pretty. looking. Okay, you know what? It is a little bit mouse-like. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. We're no. we're going back in time. It's riffing. Zoom in, Dave. Just kidding. That's still hemicorallium. Like one side, it has its polyps open, and the other side mm. is just closed. Interesting. Wonder what's going on there. Shift workers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the eight to twelve. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm good. Thank you. Ooh, quick still cam. So we have our viewers um, tuning in and asking. Um, so I know we just started our watch, but we haven't seen fish yet. Yet. Mm. So where are all the fish? Is it too deep for them? Uh, we have seen fish, but. Yeah. We, we do don't see them all the time. Yeah, we don't see them all the time. And as Jules has pointed out before, some of the fish may be avoiding us. Right. Um, but we tend to see cuskeels, ratfish, tripod, tripod fish, fish, and they kind of right. seem to come about 
bridge once now. every half hour or something. So if you stay tuned, we'll, we'll Three see. Three zero fish. meters zero five zero. Yeah, there are for sure fish in the deep sea. A lot of them avoid us. We make a lot of noise. They're here. We zoomed in. Um, we've even even seen some uh, chonicops. Right. Oh yeah. Right. Which are these really cool looking fish? So polyopagon, cool. Batfish, we've seen. Batfish. Oh, that was cool. Na 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 na. Oh wow! Yeah, so many. Polyopagon right? City over here. <laughs> kind of look like large eggs. Mm. <laughs> Rita Gorgia. Yep. More from Noah. Fly trap. Tri flop. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind if I do. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to our friends from Spain and the UK. Thanks for tuning in. Buenos dias and top of the morning to you. <laughs> what do they say in the UK for? Is that UK? British? Yeah. Top of the morning. Uh, well, they probably don't say that, but in the movies. In the movies. <laughs> yeah, I think that's... Cheerio. Oh, oh. there you go. Oh, we have some more hyalanema. They probably just say good morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. probably. Probably. <laughs> probably. And so a question from um, chat. Can we talk about the furry skirts on the sponges? Oh, yes. I love those. They're super cool, aren't they? They're so cool. They're, uh, that's how the sponge attaches to the seabed. Right. And these polyopagons make a huge mass of fur, right? I can't remember <laughs> the technical term for but they're little Basal hairs. Threads? Basal threads. Mm, that right. sounds good. Uh, <laughs> and when when the sponge dies, so it seems like if you look at them, it looks like the hairs trap sediments, right? We see right. these little mounds where the the hairs were, and they stick around longer than the the sponge. The other day we were saying they kind of remind us of Pele's hair, Pele's right. hair, which mm -hmm. is a product of kind of explosive volcanic eruptions where the the Lava gets kind of stretched out into thin strands. And depending on what they're made of, might be pretty similar because those Pele's hair is made mostly of silica. These may be made oh, of silica as right. well. All oh, right. That's so interesting. Huh. Okay, so we should be getting into steeper uh, slope here. Yes, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was, that was good, closest. actually. Yeah, you got it. Bridge now. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I could call Annie's zero family zero and, zero and zero. Uh, trick them, except I would only say, "Let's go." <laughs> How's everything going out there? Let's, let's go. go. Like Annie, are you okay? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh yeah. Um, chat says we just say good morning in the UK. Oh. <laughs> but it's, it's also the evening yeah. in the UK right now, so good evening. Oh yeah, it's good, good morning oh, yeah, for good us, evening. Good, good evening, evening for you. UK. That's good true. day, sir. Actually, it's like, is it uh, 12 hours? Yeah. 11? Yeah, it's evening time. Have we sampled some of the threads from the sponge? We have sampled sponges. We we got some with the hyalonema. Yeah. Oh, okay. Actually, we happen to have a clock. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, you're right. That is reporting Greenwich Mean Time. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a, a little biased. We have Can one we pause world here clock for one second, that's please? for the UK. <laughs> Pausing on the sponge? Yeah. Oh, sponge. The, the, the tulip? Tulip. Yeah. Zoom in, Dave. So cool. I love these ones. It's interesting because they have these kind of real patterned patterns in their growth, but they also seem to like not care a whole lot if the pattern's not exactly right. Seems like yeah, they they follow the basic pattern, but they have fun too. Yeah. Like I'm looking at that little knob on that one. Yeah. Like, I don't think that's supposed to be there, but it I is. Should. Fashion statement. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right, so this is Hyalostylus. Uh, it's a species of euplectylid. It's a lot of sponge on that narrow of a stalk. Yeah, how is it supporting stalk. itself? Well, when you're up in the water column, it's really just about having a strong stem, right? Yeah, it's both. This sponge built its stem out of straw, and it got blown over. That was a reference to, uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna, just, when you have to explain it, it's not as good, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Uh, three little pigs. Oh. Yeah. yeah, straw, There's another sponge. wood, and That's bricks. Do you wanna zoom on it? No. No zoom. All right, we got some some terrain ahead of us. <laughs> nice. Do we have any sampling goals? We, we certainly don't have a lot of room left for too oh, many samples, okay. so we got to be a little selective. Yeah, they uh, must have picked up a few rocks because we're a bit on the heavier side. Yeah, I'm a little less interested in the rocks up here because they're not the volcanic part of the seamount. Oh. What is it if not volcanic? Uh, probably carbonate, like old reef structure Ew. from okay. the, when it was the I when it was just below the sea surface mm -hmm. and the island was sinking and the reef was growing. Bridge now. <coughs> Like another chrysogorgia. We can add three zero meters to the, the step zero five zero. Talagorgia. I feel like a lot of metallogorgia have squat lobsters. Seems like squat lobsters are ones that don't discriminate too much. I, I feel like I've mm. seen them maybe in, well actually, the primnoids seem to be crinoid dominated. I haven't seen a lot of yeah. squat lobsters in there. Crinoid, huh. Crin I'm sorry, uh, uh, ophiroid, sorry. Yeah. I misspoke. Yeah, I would agree with that. Well, ophiroids, they love everything. Yeah, they see them on on crinoids. Oh, how so oh. how hey, are. for those who wanted a fish. There it yeah. is. Fish time. 
All right. We pay them to come in every half an hour. <laughs> right. You're gonna get your you're gonna get your seashells, buddy. <laughs> You'll get your cut. What happened to the sea lion that? The sea lion? Yeah, that they saw on the deck. What? What, what? fish? It was not a sea lion. Sorry, <laughs> I misspoke. Oh. You've got to focus. Lionfish. <laughs> you got us the all coffee. very excited. Wait. Yeah, I'll, the coffee well, has I'll not kicked in yet. They saw a lionfish. Yeah. Some, really? Something on the right, deck. Let's... Yeah. Wait, oh. How come we were just wait? Flying about this? fish. Flying oh, fish. It was a flying fish. fish. Okay. There we go. Okay. 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 Uh, got to the bottom of that one. <laughs> I was like really excited and then pretty me excited. Too, now too. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, the and concerned. <laughs> <laughs> also concerned. <laughs> Flying fish was our bonito. I and, love bonito. And they, they, they like jump out of the water to get away from predators. But if there's like a gust of wind, they could definitely get blown onto the deck. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes when it's windy out, you uh, you got to be careful because they're like, flack flack. <laughs> Also, flying fish are bonito, but they're not bonito, the fish. No. Oh, oh look, they're okay. so cute. Yeah, it's a different yeah, fish. Different, yeah, oh. just to be clear. I'm assuming you were trying to say that they were beautiful in Spanish, but... <laughs> no, aren't they, no. But aren't they also <laughs> called bonito? No. no. Bonito is bonito white. Bonito or like tiny tuna. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but they are bonito. Yes. That's between you and the flying fish. Hey. I think the equivalent of bonito in Hawaii is uh, kava kava. Ah. Kaba kaba or kava kaba? Kava kaba. Kava kaba. Kava kaba. The flying fish are malolo. 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 Can we zoom on this, please? The yellow coral? Sorry. Beep, beep. Is it Lolo crazy? Lolo is. Yeah. Send everybody fly in here. What is Mo? Fish. fish. Okay. Cra crazy <laughs> so crazy fish. fish. <laughs> Come on board, the crazy fish. Uh, you want it back in there? No, I'm not a hundred percent positive. Mm. The Mo part of that is. Hmm. Hmm. What do you call that one? Tentatively plexorid. Yes. What are these little pink uh, knobbies? Anobies? There's or no, hydrogen? that's the wrinkly tri flap, fly trap. Is it? Is yeah. It? Well, we've seen small. all three the smooth, the wrinkly, and the spotted. Hmm. 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 Um, are we calling. I don't know. There's some confusion with the plexorids and paramoresids. Just for me personally. Not I like think we all feel it, Jules. We're all feeling it. Yeah. Well, you can see that red headed. I've had some confusion. You can see it everywhere. Yeah, yeah, there it is. That's a great shot. That's awesome. There, it looks like it's pollinating. Um, yeah, sure. This is a beautiful coral. It is. And I'm just tentatively going to call it a plexorid. I'm with you, 100%. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You Unless someone writes in on the chat, then I'm banned. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if someone writes in on the chat, I immediately abandon <laughs> everything I've said. Chat is asking, so what gives the corals and sponges their color at the extreme depths? Um, so they don't have zooxanthellae. 
at this depth, so it's not um, algae, but proteins do have colors. They have carotenoids um, that it's, they don't have color for a particular purpose necessarily. Um, it's sort of just like, it's just sort of there. Like, no, there's no seeing color down here because there's no sunlight. Um, and so it's, it's the proteins of the coral or the proteins of the bacteria that are associated with the coral that give them their color. Awesome, thank you so much. Do you think they're surprised to learn that they have color when we shine a light <laughs> on them? <laughs> yeah, they're probably like, oh, color. Gorgeous. <laughs> Amphidicella, actually? Yeah, Amphidicella. <laughs> actually? Actually? We can keep going. <laughs> what are we looking at, that sponge? Yeah. <laughs> I got Good it, though. Dave. Oh. <laughs> cool. Oh, look, there's a hermit oh, crab a hermit? with zoanthids oh, on it. So oh, wow. that's new. Who do you, do you think that the crab wanted the zoanthid or did the zoanthid <laughs> want walk. the crab or both? It seems a little, uh, way down. Yeah. Does that have a zoanthid on its claw? No, I think it's just the big claw. No, it's just the big claw. Yeah. Uh, one big they claw. have one big claw to look scary. It's it working. Looks, yeah. That's cool. Ah. Oh, it's just the Aww. claw. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> looks a little top heavy. Oh, oh. 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 I mean, I, I, maybe it's helping in some way, though. I don't know. Do they have stinging cells like the anemones? Maybe it's getting really buff under there. It does push-ups with that one claw. <laughs> yeah. Looks like it would be really easy to go tumbling down a hill with all that. <laughs> mm -hmm. It does. <laughs> maybe with that's what the Zoantis are for. It's like a pillow for when it falls. It's yeah. A pillow, yeah. yeah. And it could just go in its shell, and I'd be like, oh, a little pile of zoanthids and nothing else. <laughs> so. True. Makes you wonder about all the zoanthids you've been seeing. Huh. Zoanthids or hermit crabs? Hermit crabs. Alright, carrying on. Zipping. Time to zip, I should say. <laughs> we have a crinoid and amphidocella. We do have um, a question from Iran in Louisiana. You found out about um, Nautilus a few days ago from the SETI live program uh, with Beth and Pablo Sabran. Cool. Nice. Um, so, well, we're not using the. So, are you just. Are you flying around looking at things, or are we using the lasers to sample and identify what you're observing? We're not using the lasers. The time. lasers? Yeah. The lasers are for scale. No, no, the laser the dive bot. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's not on the vehicle at this time because the dive started at a depth.
that was deeper than that system can go. Right. But probably the next dive we'll put it back on and uh, and drive around seeing what it can see. I think that was it would a be cool if Calo it was on Felix the pan and tilt and you could point it at what you're Noted. Yeah. It's a type of raw salad. Carsicorgia. Zoom in, Dave. Oh. Another raw salad behind it. And Sacocalyx. There's a squat lobster in there. Yep. Just as I suspected. <laughs> you give me a little leash. Yep, you have a you have a full loop in there. Can we zoom in on that um, coral whip, please? Which one? On the left? Sorry. Right. Yep. Sorry, I'm not waving at you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My friend is watching from Oregon and I was waving at her on the camera. Oh. <laughs> oh. Um I think this is a primnoid. Okay. That's good. Thank you. You want to tell your friend from Oregon your Samoan name? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I have to look at the pronunciation again. My Samoan name is now Fea Latiti, which means little squid. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Hoda. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. Um, well, we have not seen sharks um, at this depth, but we do have white tips roaming around the boat. I think we did see a shark yeah. the other day. We had a it possible was more shallow, cat shark or dog here? shark. Yeah. The deep sea. It was in the in the deep sea. It's funny with all the Latin, like, I don't actually say the Latin very often. I'm used to seeing it in writing, and we write in papers and read papers about it, but we don't often use the Latin spoken, so I'm never quite sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Because I never took Latin in school. I wanted a practical language. I took Spanish for all of my foreign language. I like your trick the other night, just say it fast and say it with confidence. <laughs> you seem to be facing the wrong way again. Yeah, the south is just calling you today. Totally. It's been calling me too. You want to cross the equator? <laughs> had to care of us, had to Christmas for an import instead of Honolulu. Because <laughs> there's not much south of here. Christmas Island in Kiribati is a little bit, is not far, and then basically. It's pretty much Antarctica next. Might be lucky and hit a uh, an island in French Polynesia, but probably gonna Antarctica is the next major landform south of here. It's 
So this is as close as we've been to Palmyra uh, yet. We're right about 100 nautical miles northeast now of Palmyra. Um, as the plan currently goes, this feature we're diving on is probably the furthest south and closest to Palmyra we will get, um, barring some kind of major weather event. Um, we'll get you know incrementally closer probably in the next two or three days um, as we dive the southern tip of this feature, but that'll only get us two or three miles closer probably. Um, uh, no big transits? Uh, no, probably not. Okay. We'll probably be, we'll spend a few more days here and then we'll start kind of bouncing our way a little bit to the north and hit a couple more seamounts as we start tracking back towards Honolulu. Uh, if so. Our next dive site's already mapped, or we still have to map them out? Uh, we should have mapped it last night. But there is still some more mapping work to do here, so I don't know what Dwight's thinking about in terms of taking a break and finishing the mapping and then diving, or doing a quick turnaround and getting back in the water and then doing that mapping on the way as we depart this area. I don't know. The weather forecasts out here are all but useless. Um, they just aren't accurate. The general trends can be somewhat reasonably accurate, like if the forecast is showing it's increasing, it's going to increase a little bit, but the actual numbers, we're routinely seeing forecasts of 17 gusting to 24 and experiencing 23 to gusting to 30 and Likewise, on the comm side, uh, there's just so little observational data out here that there's nothing to modify the forecast or refine them. But give us just a minute, Lynette. We gotta maybe it's a little steep bit here to come up. I can't tell. Yep. This part of the world is so remote that um, even finding a weather map a pre-printed weather map that covers this area is difficult sometimes. Most of them cut off just north or just south of here. I pulled up, uh, I went to marine traffic the other day and pulled up a map of all the ships in the Pacific and it was about 200, mi 200 plus miles to the nearest ship from Nautilus right now. You almost think we were quarantined or something. The, the section of open ocean was so vast around where Nautilus is with no other ships. Two hundred miles? I didn't actually measure, but it's huge. Like it was it was it literally looked like there was a multi-hundred mile quarantine ring around us. It's a long time in the life raft. Yeah, it is. Yeah, if you don't actually really ever want to sit down and do the math on how long it'll be to get rescued out here. I've done it once or twice and it was not reassuring. <laughs> Hemicoralliums, a little smaller um, bottle brush morph uh, Chrysogorgia hanging out under that overhang. Something living on top of it. Do we have the leash to look at that? Yeah, we do. We're right under. Okay, there. It's in there. Oh, wow, well, that was, so this is a Chrysogorgia. Um, I, I just did not want to focus on it, and I was looking at it from a completely different, but can we look tighter on that, those two organisms right there? Please. Sure. Let's see if we can get her to hold stuff. Go ahead, Daryl. Push in there. Over. So these look like to me to be apicophorans, mm. which are, they're uh, mollusks, 
um, but a worm body plan without a shell, and they are known colivores. So the fact that all of the tissue um, lower on the stalk is dead is probably um, those creatures just climbing their way up on the coral and eating all the coral tissue as they go. And so some of those um, completely dead um, stalks we have seen recently of Chrysogorgia on this dive, which are kind of rare because they have a proteinaceous skeleton that breaks down more fa faster than some of the others, um, are likely due to these uh, aplicophorans eating them. What are those kind of wispy things that come out and attach onto corals? I don't know. If, I feel like I might be able to see some in this. Oh, uh, the, the, the benthictinophores? Yes. Oh, do you see any of the benthictinophores? I think I might see something in the still can, but I don't know if it's... Oh, yes, oh, there it is. Yeah. Good call. Good eye. I totally missed that. Yep, oh, there's yeah. one benthictinophore yeah. sitting on the top. You can see its tentacles. Um, playing up. We actually accidentally collected one the other night, um, and it was like two millimeters. <laughs> accidentally? Well, I mean, we didn't know it was there until we were, we were looking at the samples, and I realized what it was, and it was maybe two millimeters, um, the little tiny one. Wow but it would be enough to get genetics from, probably. There's another one there. No more. Oh, yep, I got it now. Mm. Cool. All right, science is happy with this one, thanks. Roger, okay, you can go away, thanks. That's the you know, power of the different angles and lighting <coughs> on the camera. Coralie, looking at the um, go still right camera, there. saw the thanks. reflection of the tentacles that none of us could see um, looking at the main HD. Yeah, I feel like sometimes it's hard to, it's helpful to have the different viewpoints and also different color scales because sometimes it's really hard for me to see things immediately in um, Herc view. Totally. More cameras, please. Uh, more lights. Well, you need more wall space in order to display more cameras. You yeah, kind of have a wall space in here. Now we should take over the data lab. You mean the fishbowl room? <laughs> no, nope. uh, forward wall of the data lab. Get rid of those printers and cover the whole wall of monitors. Stadium seating. I'm enjoying the kind of stadium seating in here. Being a few inches taller than you in the front row does make for much better sight lines. <laughs> Is that not normal on other cruises? No. Mm -hmm. Whoever did the redesign on the studio, thank you. Great job. That would be the video team and the ROV team. So, so thank you, video. Thank you, ROV. Effort. So, two Chrysogorgias. Jim Newman. From who we Can we take a closer look on the big white coral? Sure. I think it's a crowlet, but I haven't seen Jim in a long time. It's been six, seven years since I crossed paths with him. Oh uh, yeah, still talk to him occasionally. He's uh, semi-retired, but not retired. He's somehow. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure this is some type of Crowlidae. Probably a Hemicrallium, but it doesn't look very healthy. Um, with a little uh, Paramercia at it and a Chrysogorgia at its base. All right, we're good, thanks. All right. Five minutes to breakfast. Facing south again.
so we're expecting this dive to be over around 8, 10. Uh, I think later than that. Okay. I think like one or two ship time gotcha. was last I heard. But given the speed we've been making. Probably later. Maybe a little bit later. Lots of hemichorallium here again. We had that really heavy hemichorallium band when we kind of first took over the watch and it, we didn't see as much and now we're getting back into it, it looks like. Mm. Is that a big one in the back? Yeah. Probably a type of bamboo, but I need a closer look to be sure. Looks like it has a lot of associates. It does have a whole lot of associates. I'm gonna come around the other side. The current's trying to push me into it. Sure. Come down, 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 down. So this is Horrible. definitely a bamboo. Get chomped on by a couple sea stars. 